Hey, you guys. So I did, like last night, I found more clips of Tiffany Montgomery, like, cussing on the pulpit. And yeah, that was too much. That that was too much. It wasn't necessary. Um, what, yeah, it was too much. She's doing too much. Um, but here's my thing about calling people false prophets. I'm very, very cautious of calling people false prophets. And I suggest that we all be very, very careful about calling people false prophets because, or making accusations against leaders in the body of Christ um, altogether. Um, I think there's a time and a place for exposing uh, false prophets, and I believe God does call us to do so. Uh, God has called me to do so at times, and um, he gives me the reasons why to share with the people okay i'm not just gonna go throwing it around with nothing really to say on why i think someone's a false prophet so i think if you're gonna make the claim you better come with more than because god said because god told me no like that's not enough you need like two or three witnesses again everything's confirmed by two or three witnesses and uh anyways about four years ago god um really stressed and put the fear in the Lord of the Lord in me about being slow to speak against and make accusations against other leaders in the body of Christ. And this was because he had me doing a study on the generals of the faith. So Catherine Kuhlman, um, you know, all the, all the generals of the faith back in the days. And what he really highlighted to me is that he used these people in very powerful and mighty ways and supernatural ways, but there were some of them who began to um, speak and make accusations against the other. And ultimately it led to their either uh, their death uh, a shameful death or an embarrassing death um, and um, so he basically through that study was saying preparing me because I know God is you know uses me to speak for him and the more that we obtain a platform the more that we um, are used by God in powerful ways, the more we can start to think that we can do no wrong. And this is very dangerous and scary um, and something we need to be very cautious about. So I'm very slow to say someone is a false prophet um, and I'd advise everyone else to be very cautious. Um, you can point out something you don't agree with, uh, but be very careful with the statements you make um, and make sure that you're being spirit led. Now, one of the things I don't agree with with Tiffany is that she says Celestial is a false prophet. Now, I also don't agree with Celestial because Celestial says that, um, well, not with everything that Celestial says. I think a lot of what she shares is from the Lord, but I also think um, she may not have the times and seasons like um, fully in uh, like accurate not that the prophecies aren't accurate but maybe the fulfillment and the time and season may not be exactly what she thinks it is um, but I also don't agree that Celestial says that Tiffany is a false prophet she's also said that Marcus Rogers is a false prophet and I don't believe that either I don't think she's right on that um, and you know just because you're right on a lot of things doesn't mean that you know you can't be wrong some of the times, okay? Because we're still in this flesh body and we can still get it wrong. And the thing with prophecy is that, I mean, it, it, it takes a lot of discernment still. Like most of the times, yes, sometimes we'll get audible words, but most of the times it's not audible words. Most of the times it's like God speaks through a spiritual language, through impressions, through visions, through dreams, uh, through... Uh, you know signs and symbols and as the prophet of God it's your job to interpret and discern and bring about 
the message that God's trying to relay, depending on what language and tool he's using to speak to you through. And he speaks to us all in different ways. For me, I don't dream that often. So when I do dream, I'm usually pretty uh, good at being able to discern and interpret the dream when it's from the Lord. Um, and I'm also able to discern when something is an attack of the enemy through dreams. Uh, but for the most part, God speaks to me through uh, just impressions and discernment and um, through signs and confirmations throughout my day-to-day -day relationship with him. And so anyways, I think there's a, there's a, a demonic attack on the body of Christ. Um, because we know that that is causing confusion and division. And um, we know that the author of confusion is the enemy. God is not the author of confusion. It is the enemy. And I believe when we take the bait, um, when we're quick to take the bait, we can fall into, you know, the flesh and into uh, feelings and emotions that aren't necessarily coming from the spirit of God. And so we have to be very careful about not doing that. So I think that it's very sad to see all these different leaders in the body of Christ attacking one another and calling each other false prophets. Um, Cause many of them I believe are not false prophets. They are genuine prophets. They are not perfect. Uh, they don't always get it right. There's definitely room for growth. Maybe they're not 100% accurate in all this prophetically, but I don't think that makes them false. You know, it would take, you know, I'm just very careful about calling someone false. And especially, you know, God is not, um, he's not always in this box that we like to keep him where it's like, he does what we expect. Like he used Balaam, who was not a prophet of Israel. He spoke through Balaam. He gave the star prophecy to Balaam. He used Balaam to bless Israel, even though he was hired to curse Israel. And God spoke to him. God met with him. God blocked his path and spoke through the donkey. And he was not a prophet of Israel. So, um, you know, God will use who he chooses to use. We just need to be.